afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here for someone like me who knows nothing about your subject. BOF, the uh, agency that is promoting innovation in the Basque Health Service, we wanted to open an exploratory way, exploratory way um, an innovation way with uh, improbable connections that I represent here today. It's about the um, integrated care for oncological patients through a special pill. This conference, international conference, wants to go from an old uh, health system that puts the illness at the center to a different model that puts the focus on the patient and the integrated care of that patient. But what else in the challenge that we try to solve today, the oncological patient? Is it possible to go from a patient-centered uh, system to a person with cancer to the per person-centered uh, system with a whole life of the person living with a cancer. It's not a person with cancer, but a person living with cancer. In improbable uh, connections, our motto is to hybridize, to innovate. We use arts, culture, and creativity. We, it's the engine of innovation in other sectors, too, for transformation, for instance, and in the health system, too. Why not? This uh, piece, this play that we're going to see now, is just a part of a whole process that takes uh, various months. A group of people, or people who lived with cancer, from different positions. And health people, health personnel from various specialities, they have worked with patients and with a team of uh, uh, improbable connections in trying to identifying milestones both patients and professionals identify these milestones when living with uh, illnesses and conditions. This hybridization can help us to improve the health system. They've done it with Tantaka. Tantaka is a very famous theatrical uh, company in the Basque Country with a direct, uh, under the direction of Iger Martin. He is the mediator with uh, improbable connections. The procedure is necessarily heterodox. It's been an intense experience for all the participants in this experiment. I'd like to thank them from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for your uh, engagement. Nacho Begoña, Carlos Maite, Julia, Estivaliz, Josefa, Anne, Mariasun, Elena. Correspondences is the name of this play that is directed by Mireya Gabilondo. And the protagonists are the people who lived with cancer or around cancer. And it's also uh, played by Ainara Ortega, Kike Ruiz de Rada, Iñaki Salvador, artists and people from the professional world and the health professionals. They dealt with cancer at some point in their lives and or with their families. All the examples here are real. This is the fruit of the joint work. It's about um, uh, drama. Uh, this is told by the protagonists of the stories. We all know that integrated care requires many uh, commitments within the, our health systems, but it requires an active listening and not a hierarchical listen of, of people who are living through that disease or condition. Okay. Relax. Forget about your scientific criteria. And just, I, I hope that you will be surprised by arts in this case. Thank you.
with reveries never die in my solitude you taught me with memories that never die Hello. I remember when I got the news. I was listening to In My Solitude in my car radio. I was told, oh, OK, we'll have to start with the uh, treatment as soon as possible. The result of your tests has been positive. You've got cancer. The world just stopped. There was a deep silence. I couldn't speak. I couldn't think. I couldn't drive. I couldn't breathe. I remember I thought, maybe it's a misunderstanding. It's not true. Couldn't be true. Yes? Yeah. No, no, I can't on, on Wednesday, on, at 8 in the morning. Yes, OK, I'll be there. OK, at 8 in the morning, I'll be there. Thank you. Goodbye. Me acuerdo que en ese momento... I remember that at this precise moment in that car, I remembered that the favorite word of my uh, father was bicho, thing. Everything that interested him was qualified as thing. What is this thing for when he saw the thermomix? Oh, these big things, what they do now when he saw me going up the street with my electric bike when I had to give him the news that he had cancer, I told him they discovered a thing in him. What thing? He asked suddenly. He was alarmed. Oh, my dad, it seems that it, well, it seems it's cancer. Oh, that's not a thing, he said. That's the thing. I remember so many things. I remember it was, it was a fantastic day, beautiful day. It was on the 1st of April, and uh, we had an uh, appointment with the oncologist. Lander was my boyfriend. He was 26, and he had cancer. On the 1st of April, we knew Josefa. I remember that Lander and Josefa had the same kind of T-shirt, striped T-shirt. Josefa told me that we had to start now with the treatment, as soon as possible. Josefa had a very sad smile. I remember when we got out of hospital, in the corridor, we heard doctors talking. He, they were talking about Josefa. Uh, it seems that the day before it had a very hard day for her. Eight. Yesterday, eight patients died in her service. I remember that Lander and myself, myself we looked into our eyes and we got out of hospital uh, holding our hands. And I remember that the day was still beautiful. And I remember when I got to work, I wrote this letter to my daughters. Hi, girls. You wonder what happens to me, why I'm writing you this letter. I'll explain it to you. As Well, we speak on the phone every day, 
We listen to each other, but now I would prefer you to read what I want to tell you. I never told you until now, but I was doing, going through several tests and I had the confirmation that I had the thing. Well, let's kill it. Next week I'll start with therapy. I hope you will come to see me and we will laugh before anything. After the first therapy I will explain about chemotherapy. But I'd like you to know that you give me so much strong, so much strength. I will, we'll have to go through diff difficult days, difficult moments, but we'll have very good days and very good moments too. And I want you to know that I'm going to take advantage of this cancer as much as I can. I remember that after the four first chemotherapy sessions, Lander and myself, we, we went for a weekend to Galicia. And Lander, without saying anything, he wrote this postcard to Josefa. Dear Josefa, I send you this postcard to tell you about my mood, explosive, as you can see on the postcard. I feel strong, I feel calm, and everything is thanks to you. I know you will say no, no, but I can tell you it's true. Thank you for everything. And I also remember the day I met Nacho, my chemotherapy colleague, and he said to me that that morning he had uh, written to me a, a text mes message, but he never sent it. Dear chemo pal, I know that you're sad, sad and you're afraid. You just got a terrible piece of news that we normally associate with death. Some some moments you'd be very irritated. You'll feel so sad. At other moments you think that all that you've been told is in fact a lie. At the beginning, all these tests will be so strange to you. You don't know anything about medical treatments, cycles, uh, red tape terms. Maybe you think that the consent I just signed is much worse than the cancer itself. Just take advantage, enjoy and readjust your mind to the new situation. I know it's complicated, but I still try to do that. I remember that very often I was ca called that I was courageous, that I was uh, uh, winning the war, that I, I was a champion. But the only thing I felt was that, in fact, I was following a treatment that was working okay for me. It wasn't my merit. I had no strength. I couldn't even walk. I didn't understand why people could say that I was winning a war. I remember, I thought, if things are not going okay, I will collapse, but me, because it's my fault. Lander refused to use war words. He told me, against what I have to battle, what fight, what war. The only thing I do is to live, to enjoy every day. Days are so short for me now. A month ago, I read in a newspaper an interview to a boy that had a cancer. He said, I don't want to live with fear, but sometimes I say bullshit and I'm really afraid. I was in hell. I became aggressive. I was so bold. I was irritated. I only could watch Chuck Norris's films. Shots and more shots. And my wife asked me, Carlos, are you okay? Oh, yes, of course. I wasn't shot. I'm still alive. I'm still here. Oh, I said so many things, stupid things. I remember it was a very hard autumn. And I said, shit, shit. I can't do that. I can't stand that. I'm fed up with that. 
And I remember an embrace. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't do that with my family around. One day, I went to see my GP, and uh, I could, just collapsed. With no announcement, suddenly I was sitting there, and I was crying like mad. La doctora entendió. The doctor understood. She came up to me. She uh, took out the stethoscope and she embraced me in silence. She hugged me and I was crying in her arms. And she told me, look, if you feel sad, if you're irritated, if you're in anguish, please tell me, I can help you. We have a, a team of psycho-oncologists. If you feel unbalanced by cancer, we need to balance you back again so that curing your cancer is easier later on. You will do that? Will you tell us about your sadness? I remember at this moment, I was able to timidly smile. It wasn't mixing shame, cry, crying, tears, and everything. Fresco y curado, claro y feliz. Y te digo, voy al bosque para aliviarme de ti. Sabes que dentro tengo un tesoro que me llega a la raíz. Será que la más profunda alegría me habrá seguido la rabia ese día. La rabia imperio asesino de niños, la rabia se me ha podrido el cariño. Por Dios tengo frío, la rabia es mío, eso es mío, solo mío. La rabia bebo pero no me mojo, la rabia miedo a perder el manojo. La rabia hijo, zapato de tierra, la rabia dame o te hago la guerra. La rabia todo tiene. Momento, la rabia el grito se lo lleva el viento, la rabia el oro sobre la conciencia, la rabia coño paciencia, paciencia. I remember also this routine test in my health center. I was reading a magazine and they said that in 2050 science will or would cheat death. Well, why not? I remember I thought it's, it's a pity I'm not younger because I would like to be there in 2050. It was my turn. Oh, hi Kike. How are you? Yes. Well, okay. I feel tingling on my hands and feet. It's a strange sensation. Can you describe it? I don't know. I'll explain to you. I feel like it was a champagne bottle and that somebody has agitated before opening it. Don't worry. It's normal reaction of chemotherapy. It will go away. Okay. Let's do the test. Listen, you think I'll be alive in 2050? 2050? 
maybe I won't be there in 2050. Why? Uh, well, just read an, um, a scientific article saying that in 2050 will be immortal, that will uh, cheat death. Immortal? Oh, that's boring. But don't read that. Don't believe it, because they just uh, t tell bullshit. What you should do is not to forget to uh, take care of your mind and your body, and you'll be alive. Thank you. I remember that one night we were having dinner, and Lander asked me, when people ask me in the street, what do I have to say to them? Okay, this game, the Ruby Cube, has accompanied our, our son Nacho and myself in many difficult moments. I, when I was alone, waiting for the test results for the CT scan, I couldn't read anything. I couldn't understand what I read. I just could listen to music. A vals, please. At night, many nights, I go to my balcony, I go out. If I look towards the south, 30 degrees west, I see a woman, she writes on a table. I see her from the side, and some nights there's another woman with a strange kimono, and she brings her a tea, and the two of them, they laugh, they talk. We protected ourselves against bold questions or awkward situations. Times, time goes by and both ways are still open hope and uh, the end as a great fright for us. The hospital is our second home. It's a long time since I can't see the woman with the kimono, but the writer, that lady, is still there writing on her table. Sometimes she walks she, and she puts on the kimono of the other woman. I remember when the future started to dilute, and Lander told me, the future doesn't exist, Ainara. Everything happens now. I thank from the bottom of my, of my heart what life t tells us about the cancer. We speak about our plans, our dreams, and death was there. It was another character in our lives. Does it exist? Are we souls inhabiting bodies? And we speak about our last desires, our last wishes for the future. Maybe I could have an accident myself. I could be dead tonight. And Lander told me, oh, I don't want to be alone. And I remember Josefa's words. Dear Lander, I would have liked to live with you longer. I don't know how much time is left for you. I don't have uh, a ball to read the future. We would we, we try to do is to have you in the better situation possible without pain, without anguish, without anxiety, close to your people so that you can say goodbye if you want, that everything is left closed for you at the end. It was a pleasure to accompany you. You've been a very good person and a very good patient. You'll be in my memory and I'll have affection for you until the end of days. See you late. Say you soon. I kiss you. Lander died on the 11th of August. I remember it was a beautiful day. And I put a lot of flowers in my hair to say goodbye. Seeing the beloved dying is a mixture of cruelty and beauty. So difficult to express. I 
put makeup on my eyes because I knew that he was going to see me from from where he was, I don't know where. And I remember I sang this song. Quebranto los dos materiales que forman mi canto y el canto de ustedes que es mi propio canto. Un 11 de agosto. It was August the 11th, and I remember it was a beautiful day. I was walking along the city, and all of a sudden, I found something unexpected. Different people dancing around. They were dancing tango. They were tangoing. And then I thought, Cancer is to be sung as a tango, it's desperate and tragic, with some effect, shocks, tension, stress, and so much sadness in the voice. And yet you need to dance it with someone. English people say, so it takes two to tango. Yet I would say more people should dance together. Cancer is a fucking tango. You need to dance it as if it were a folklore dance. The more, the merrier. And I yet recall thinking the best partner to dance to cancer was my doctor. My doctor was such a wonderful dancer. No fear of physical contact, looked me in the eye, guiding my steps. I just had to be taken away, carried away. She had everything she needed in psychology to adjust to any partner, clumsy as they could be, because I was one of them. I was so clumsy. And yet I danced. And what's better, I'm still dancing. Lizardi, rimbo e torridu, itas caldes caetago, where it is sign que un de la esancio agu, es sin se la aspaldia saldu eche ti que tabe la sea ne sheriga y tu de no, erlo juanes, mañame su laria, vida li agu a los cotorrera, es quillara lucetan. Belea kushatzen, no te incen y kustesan, gero campa y a que en su disquiago. Sacorra que un caca, ordua sortuais, pide ti balanza caeta, ire que naure saure. Y a rigar en ean, cerrando erorias, cure oñeta neta, gorpugo gorincen, mudas que naren tronoan. Erchidisquiago, peguía, cadios y que es, etago y saldean, música surbate tan sarturic, o petipo, et pirotecnia ni gabe, lurpera tu bagu para salir rimbo e torridu, y tazales caetago, puerireza en que un de la esancio agu, es insla. Vámonos, salir. Y aquellos hay que sacarlos. ¿Qué haces aquí? 